What I like about the third way is, you don't even have to be in a stance. Even if I was in a very weak position like this, and Chris swings hard, if I do the third way, he still, swing hard, Chris. He still can't move me. I might just rock back and do that. Right? So, not because I'm strong, it's the nature of the vertical movement. Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Come Free Report. Today we're going to talk about um, what to do if God grabs your neck in the context of last time I demonstrated if someone swing at you, you do a Kanzo. And then when you block the arm, some people ask what happens if the guy forces his way in and grab your neck. So today we'll talk about that. And before we do that, I want to let you know again, we have a level one Wing Chun course available on my website, which specializes in solo training. Okay, back to the neck grab. Scott, can you please come on in? So, some of you worry about that guy take a swing at you. When you're here, what happens if this guy forces his way in and grab your neck, right? When that happens, first of all, the guy's swing, and he grabs your neck, he really can't if you line up your bones. Try it, Scott. He can't really grab, right? But since you're worried what to do if a guy does grab your neck, I'll show you what to do. Even if a guy gets your neck, don't worry about it. So can you on this side, Scott? They'll probably see it a little bit. If the guy grabs your neck, right? If, even if they had he just starts hitting here. He can't really do much from here. Okay. I'll go even slower. If he comes in, grab the target, Scott. Right? Once you hit here, he backs up, right? If he can't come forward, he can't really clinch hard, he comes in. Once you do this, look where his spine is, right? Now if I do this, this first, and then down. So, um, go lighter. I mean, I'll go lighter. Or you can hit here, now he moves his strength, right? Or you can hit here. Anything that tells him he can't grab hard. He has to be in this position to grab hard, right? So if you lift his chin up, now he can't pull hard, is what I'm trying to say. So you can go this way. Or you can go this way. So if he comes in and grab, you hit. You hit, and then you go, right? But if the guy grabs, you must get this hand in here before that hand fires. He's not just gonna stand there, he's gonna start hitting you, right? So if he comes in, you have to hit him here, and then you can hit, hit, hit. That's it, right? So I'll give you some solo exercise for this idea. Okay, thanks, guy. All right. So, when you're training solo, and you can feel, say if you imagine someone's grabbing your neck, one of the things you can do is, when the guy's grabbing on this side, never hit high with this hand, because his elbow is going to stuff this. You're not going to be able to get a punch off that line when his elbow's in the way. If you try to punch over, the guy will see it. If the guy can see it, then he's not going to get him, right? So fire the other hand. So if he grabs with his right arm, hit with your left. If he grabs with his left arm, if you grab with his left, you hit with your left. If you grab with his right, you hit with your right. So that's the idea. In your low shot, on the other hand, you can fire in either hand. But again, the most important thing you can remember is when a guy grabs you, his other hand is coming, right? So for a solo exercise, you can visualize someone grabbing your neck with his right and you fire your right. He grabs with his left, you fire your left. The most important part is to get the spine from bending to going straight, at least going straight, preferably going back. Because as soon as he's in a bent forward position, he's going to have a very strong pulling power. And if he's bigger than you, it's going to be hard to get out of that, right? But if you can get his spine going backward or straight, then it doesn't matter how strong he can pull. He won't be able to pull you in. It's just physics. He, his posture is not allowing him to pull hard, right? So that punch is very important. You don't have to hit him hard, but you have to hit him in the right angle. And that's what I demonstrated for Scott, right? Another thing you can do, Scott, can you please come on in? If for some reason he grabbed your neck, we talked about you lifting his neck up, then you can't really do that, right? But another thing you can do is when he comes and grab, you can stop it right away again with the tons up. Now when he forces his way in, and let's say he's stronger than me, and I can't stop that, right? So he comes in, bang, and he forces his way in. He changed the angle. You see how his feet move when I change the angle? So from here, you change it to this. Every time that you drill it forward, he forces his way in, that changes the angle. And now, you can do other stuff, right? So when he forces his way in, you, you don't have to deal with it after he already grabbed you. You can deal with it on the way in. Now if he forces his way in again, you can change it in another way, right? So he forces his way in, I did a bomb tap, and that redirects the energy, and that leaves me in a different position. So when he forces his way in here, and to grab me, you can either drill it, or you can bomb tap, redirect the energy. Thanks, God. Okay. 
And that is already in your form in Silimda. On this part of the form. You know how we go like this and then we go like that? If you reverse it, it would be from here to here. So you can do that on the side. If you bridge an arm here and he forces his way in, simply do a bong out, it'll go right over your head. So when a guy throws a hook and he forces his way in, don't worry too much about it. Okay. So the solo exercise you can do for that is imagine the arms on your side and roll it over instead of doing it from the center. And that's going to help you with that. Okay. See you next time.